Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be talking about Saracenias, where you can find them, all the different types, and a little bit about their care. So let's start the video. You know what guys, something that's really funny, whenever I'm editing videos, and obviously when I'm talking about different plants, I always hold them up in a pot like this, but all the pots look exactly the same because you know our plants are tiny, you can't even see them. And it's just something I just feel so silly when I hold these up sometimes. So before we start the video, the other day I got a pamphlet in the mail talking about some ice cream that you can get because there's a new place that's you know opened back up. I think it's time for us to have a quick little ice cream break. There's a free kitty's ice cream. So Courtney's gonna get the kitty's ice cream. Go to the reject shop, we'll be taking you home. <laughs> They're so big. Mm. Just add some, some light, start dancing much more. So how is it? It's okay. It's not worth $7. <laughs> so there you have it guys. You can tell that obviously the ice cream really wasn't worth it. I find that fast foods in like first world countries is really not that great. I mean, I, I've obviously lived in South Africa, the fast food there is really good, but I've also been to the UK, I was working in the UK, the fast food there is trash. And I've been to Canada, and the fast food there is also pretty bad. Yeah, even here in Australia, the fast food is trash. I'd rather just make myself, you know, chicken nuggets from frozen chicken from the supermarket or something, it tastes so much better. Like, yeah, it's super weird, but Guess it is what it is. Anyway, this channel is not a food channel, so let's continue talking about the Saracenia. So obviously, we have a Saracenia purpurea over here, and they're all just little sprouts, as you can see over here, and we have Saracenia flava outside. Now, this video idea is not my own. It was actually suggested by one of our subscribers. He wanted us to do, you know, a little bit of a video on Saracenias, you know, where you can find them, the care, and just them in general, because as he said, there aren't many videos out there about Saracenias, so here's the video. And that also means that if you guys want me to cover any specific topics, please let me know in the comments. I'll be super happy to address the topics that you guys think are the most important. So let's continue talking about the Saracenias. Okay guys, so I'm just on my computer now because I want to read out all the different types of Saracenias there actually are, all the different species. And obviously I can't remember them all because there's literally that many. So there is the purple pitcher plant, which is also known as Saracenia purpurea, the Saracenia leucophylla, the Saracenia flava, or some people call it the yellow pitcher plant because it's kind of yellow, the Saracenia oreophylla, the Saracenia psittacina, psittacina, I can't say it, but it's psittacina, it's the ones that like, kind of like lays down in the water. Saracenia rubra, Saracenia minor, Saracenia albumensis. I mean, I've heard of it, but I, yeah, I don't really remember it. I've heard of it, but I don't remember it. And there's Saracenia rosea here, but I think that is just Saracenia purpurea as well. So as you can see, Wikipedia is here telling us is that there's eight to 11 different species of these Saracenias which are also known as pitcher plants or North American pitcher plants because the other pitcher plants are actually Nepenthes. So obviously these are just the species that I've listed so far. There are obviously tons of subspecies and forms and different varieties and crosses of them all. Like for example, you get Saracenia purpurea, subspecies purpurea, and then form venosa, for example, that's just one. And then you can get subspecies of a different form and subspecies of a different form. And then instead of a subspecies of purpurea, you get a different subspecies. So there are tons and tons and tons of different types of Saracenias that you can get, which are all basically comprised of those eight to 11 species, which many people argue because, you know, some people will say that there's eight species, some say there's 11, some say there's nine, some say there's 10, some people don't even know what a Saracenia is. So obviously, depending on who you ask, they'll all give you a different you know, idea on what they think is the true amount of Saracenias that there are in the world. But obviously, we know that there is about 8 to 11, depending on who you ask. So the next question is, where are these guys actually from? You know, obviously, as I've said, they're also called the North American pitcher plant. And the reason for this is because they're found in North America. 
you mainly find them on like the eastern seaboard so like florida and south carolina and the north carolinas those are like pretty big ones because obviously that's where the venus fly traps are from too and then you know going up like i think it's jersey um new york i don't i don't know really american maps i only kind of know american maps but yeah going upwards the further north you go the more likelihood you can get of seeing Saracenia purpurea because they are super cold hardy um, Saracenias. They're actually a Saracenia that has the greatest cold tolerance out of all the Saracenias and they can also stretch into Canada. And then I think you may get a couple... Was that a, was that a bird or like a rabbit that just went past the... I, I swear to you, I saw something. I saw something in the camera. Anyway. I'm sure that you can find some Saracenias on the west coast, like in Oregon and uh, California and stuff like that, because that is obviously where you can find Darlingtonia. I'm pretty sure that you can find them all around the sides of, of North America, but not so much in the middle of America. So let's talk a little bit more about how you actually grow these guys. So obviously, as I've said, these guys are native to North America. So how do these guys actually grow? Well, if you're growing them from seeds, you have to give them something called cold stratification. So what exactly is cold stratification? Cold stratification is where you put the seeds in, you know, a bag or into some soil or something that is going to be kept cold and moist. So we've covered this in the channel before. We actually made little bags full of sphagnum moss that we, you know, moistened up and we put the seeds inside of those bags and we put those bags into the fridge for four weeks. So obviously if you want a guide on that, do check out that video because that guide really shows you how to do it. But essentially the seeds need to be kept cold and moist just like they would experience in the winters of North America where they will be kept cold and obviously moist too. This actually allows the plant to know that the next period of warmth when you take them out the fridge means that it's time for them to grow. Without this cold period, they kind of get confused in a way or the germination results will be you know slightly less because the hormones within the seed has not really you know gone through their natural cycle and allow the plant to really start germinating and growing come springtime so it is very important that you do stratify your seeds now the next thing is that not only the seeds experience the cold weather obviously the adult plants will experience the exact same cold weather because if this is the adult plant, it makes its babies and it falls right next to it. So obviously when it's cold, they will both be experiencing the cold. So what does this mean for the plant itself? So obviously when the cold weather comes in and obviously winter time, it means that there is a decreased photoperiod. And I've covered what this word actually is a couple of times, but I'll tell you one more time. It is when there is a decreased amount of sunlight in you know, the a region or area that you're measuring. And what this means is that your adult Saracenias they go to sleep because they want to conserve their energy throughout the winter and store all that energy in a rhizome that they have growing underground. And this is something that all Sarah seniors do. They all go to sleep in winter, they don't throw out any new pictures and they store all their energy in their rhizomes underground. And come springtime, they start making brand new traps, bigger and much stronger than the last season. And obviously it really helps the plant grow super, super well and super, super strong. So you must always ensure that you give your Saraceniers a winter dormancy if you want your plants to live a long and fruitful life. So another thing about their dormancies and springtime is that some of these Saraceniers, they put out pictures kind of at different times of the seasons. Yes, they all grow when it's warmer, springtime, summertime, and some of them late autumn. But obviously, each species will be creating the pictures at different times. For example, I know that Saracenia leucophylla often keeps their pitches later in the season, so come into autumn time, that's when they really make some of the biggest and best pitches. Whereas Saracenia flava really makes their new pitches right at the beginning of spring, and in autumn time they don't make any new pitches. So this is obviously something between all the different Saracenias, they all have different you know, periods within their growing season where they put out their biggest and best traps. So that is something to keep in mind if you're growing these guys that, you know, even though it's their growing season, they may not look the best all the time throughout their growing season. So let's talk a little bit more about their care. So as I've said, these guys are native to North America along the Eastern and maybe the Western seaboards. What this really means is that 
they are native to you know boggy marshy areas and this is really an area with slow moving water that is all collected in like a shallow bowl of land and in this bowl of land obviously this rainwater has collected and you know leaf materials and mosses and whatever grows and dies and creates very acidic soils and this is where you can oftentimes find saracenias drosera if you're living in the carolinas the venus fly traps so that's a great place that you find them and in such if you're growing your plants you really need to try and imitate this environment as much as you can this means that you should really grow your saracenias in a mixture of peat and sand or peat and perlite, which is most similar to their natural growing environments. I will actually put links to those brands in the description below in case you do want to get some peat for them. But essentially, peat and sand, peat and perlite is very good for them. Just don't overwater them. Well, talking about watering, we should cover that too. So as I've said, these guys live in bogs and marshlands and just like Venus flytraps, they need to be kept in a bowl of water. And the reason for this is so that they have water available to them, you know, constantly, just like they would naturally have in the wild. So obviously, when this water bowl starts to get low, once the tray is actually dry, then you can fill the pot back up with some more water. The water to use is distilled water, reverse osmosis water, or rainwater. The best you can use is rainwater, but obviously if you can't get rainwater, definitely look at getting distilled or reverse osmosis water. And some people actually use something called zero water, zero water pitchers. And this is like one of those like water jugs which has like a filter in it and it actually does work for cannabis plants. Obviously not a lot of them because it doesn't make a lot of water at once. But if you do want to check out that product, I also have it in the link below so you guys can use that product. You know, obviously to filter your tap water and give that to your plants and it'll be super good for them because this water will be low in nutrients just like what they would experience in these boglands. Now what about sunlight? How much sunlight do these guys need? Because obviously they should be grown just like Venus flytraps and Venus flytraps need a lot of sunlight. So as I said, just like Venus flytraps, Saracenias love sunlight. If you can keep them outside in the full direct bright sun for at least eight hours a day, these guys will be extremely, extremely happy. All of my Saracenias are growing outside. Actually, every single one of our carnivorous plants are grown outside and they get at least eight hours of direct sunlight every single day. And this really allows them to color up and have amazing colorful pictures. You know, just like the Saracenia purpurea, it can have nice dark purple pictures. The Saracenia leucophila can have those green and white pictures. The Saracenia flowers can have those nice tall yellow pitches with the red veins on them. And really, you need good sunlight to ensure that these plants can actually reach the most healthiest point with the best colored pitches. So let's now go and talk about dormancy and their flowering times. As I've said earlier, every single winter time, these guys want to go dormant. So when the photoperiod decreases and when winter comes around, they will slowly develop pitches slower and eventually they'll stop completely. And this is really when their winter dormancy starts. You can leave the pitches on or you can cut them all off. It's all your choice. But what I recommend is that you leave the pitches on if they are still green and colorful. Obviously, once they go completely brown, cut it off. But if they still have leaves that have some color in them, leave it there until the springtime. When you see your first pitcher starting to develop from the center of the Saracenia, then cut off all of those old traps because this will allow better sunlight to the developing pitchers and better airflow to the developing pitcher, which really allows the plant to grow really well and healthy. And it also allows sunlight, water, and air movement to get right into the middle of the plant where the rhizome is, and that keeps the plant nice and healthy. Come springtime, this is when your plants will start growing new traps out of the center of the plant, as I've said, but it is also the time where they create their flowers. Now, the awesome thing about Saracenias is that they have really, really strange and weird looking flowers. And oftentimes the flower is the very first thing that develops. You will see like a round little ball coming out of the center of your plant and it starts stretching out on quite a thick stem. And you think to yourself, what the hell is going on here? Obviously the flower starts off as a little ball. It grows very, very tall, sometimes up to two or four feet, depending on the species and obviously the maturity level. And that flower slowly, you know, develops petals and sepials and sepals and all the different things. And it comes up out the ground. And if my, <laughs> I'm dancing again here. Yeah. 
If my hand is the, the flower, it comes out the ground, okay, here's the ground, comes out the ground, and it eventually goes over like this, kind of like an umbrella's hook, and then the petals open up like this. It is a very, very interesting plant. So underneath this flower, you have something called the upside down umbrella. Inside of the covering, at the top of the plant, you get the anthers, which releases all the pollen, and on the inside of the umbrella, you get the stigma. And what those are is where the pollen needs to touch so that the plant can create the seeds. You know, just like every other flower, you have to put the pollen on the stigma so it makes seeds exactly the same in the Saracenias. So if you want to create seeds, that's the way to do it. And when we eventually have flowering Saracenias, I'll obviously do a guide on that. So make sure you subscribe to the channel for when we do do that eventually. So that is it for today's video on the Saracenias, like some of their care, and obviously some information about these guys for, you know, really a beginner. If you guys want me to do a specific video only on the care or just a video only on information about them, please let me know because I'll be happy to do that too. So if you've enjoyed this so far, please remember to leave a like. Now, you may remember that a couple days ago, we won our Drosophyllum seeds and I'm still waiting for the seeds to arrive. I have absolutely no idea when they will arrive, but the date arrives, I will film a video for you guys. So. Yeah, I have no clue when it will be and hopefully it's soon, hopefully it's sometime within the next two days. I think it will come tomorrow on Tuesday because I just, I just have a feeling that it will come tomorrow, but obviously it's just a feeling. So yeah, hopefully sometime this week we'll get them so we can plant them up together. I'm super, super excited to grow them with you guys. And we will continue doing our weekly Wednesday updates on all our plants and our Friday FAQs and our Saturday Species Spotlights. If you guys want me to do any specific things on each of these days, please let me know in the comments below. And if you want me to cover any other topics, any other things you would like to know about these plants, just other things in general, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be very happy to talk about them, address them, and you know, just share it with you guys. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel because obviously if you've watched this much of the video, you'll probably enjoy the rest of the content that we make every single week. So I'll see you in tomorrow's video.